the late evening rainstorm cascades over the towers of an Emodian city. Down on a lower level walkway, pink and blue neon light refracts and scatters through the falling water before splashing over the dark chrome ground. From behind a great billowing smoke pillar, a man in a trench coat steps out of an alleyway. His hat is tilted forward, keeping his face hidden and dry. He makes his way down the suspended street, passing by a sparse number of other pedestrians, one drunkenly stumbling their way out of the rain. He stops in front of a green illuminated sign that reads, The Cosmic Coffin. A burly bouncer in a dark green suit meets him at the door with an annoyed, disapproving glare. The man pulls a letter from his trench coat and hands it to him. The bouncer's eyes open wide before he immediately opens the doors for the man. The entryway has a brassy colored floor, accented by dark velvet wall panels, built around various austere deco art pieces, all cast in dimly warm light, illuminating from a geometric chandelier suspended from above. An old robot attendant meets the man at the door and takes his dripping wet coat, but he insists on keeping his hat. In a sharp gray suit and blue tie, the man follows the live piano into the concert hall to see a larger version of the lobby chandelier glowing through the smoke, permeating from the many patrons sitting at the tables and booths, an audience seduced by the charming melody orchestrated by the man on stage behind the keys. He's off center from the spotlight, but the embers of his cigarette dimly reveal his dark, untrimmed hair, framing an unkept scruff of a beard. His tall, thin frame is hunched over the piano, seemingly wrenched with grief as he continues to guide the audience down a path. The man from outside settles into a seat at the end of the bar to watch the performance. A motion in the corner of his eye catches his attention. The bartender, a striking woman with long black hair and smoky makeup, gestures at him if he'd like a drink. The man gently puts a hand up to decline before scanning his eyes around the room. He quickly notices a rough character in a black, double-breasted, pinstripe suit and hat sitting at the other end of the bar. Watching him for a moment, he notices the man is clutching a saxophone case. He's likely just the next performer, but something feels off about him. The pianist walks his fingers down to the final notes of his piece. He calmly raises his hand to thank the crowd as a few audience members stand up in applause. As the pianist gets up to leave the stage, the man from outside notices one of the audience members reaching into their coat. A pistol shines in their hand as it's raised up to the stage. <laughs> the man in the crowd drops his gun and collapses to the floor as the pianist looks about the room with a smoking revolver in his hand. The man in the pinstripe suit pulls a drum-barreled submachine gun from the saxophone case. <laughs> The pianist dives off stage to avoid the bullets as they rip through the piano in the back curtains. The man from outside rushes at the gunner, but stops as a blast rips through the attacker and throws him to the ground. The man turns to see the bartender lowering a shotgun and putting it calmly back behind the bar. Bar's clear, legs. The pianist approaches the bar. You always attract the worst man to this club, Linda. I may want to start playing on your nights off. Like you'd ever be here on a night I'm not, you drunk scoundrel. Lakes leans a hand on the bar. Uh, you're probably right. I guess I'm just a sucker for danger. Say, after this gets cleared up, do you maybe want to... Go the fuck home, clean up, and go to bed and try to forget about the guy I just shot? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> of course. Take care, Linda. Linda puts her hand on top of Lakes's. You too, Lakes before walking away to the entrance, where two cops in blue cross button jackets walk in to investigate the scene. The man from outside takes his hat off, revealing his short blonde hair and battle-hardened eyes. Your enemies have a pretty serious grudge against you. Should I ask what I'm getting myself into? No. I've got no real enemies. These guys are just being petty about something. Anyway, I'm glad you showed up. Go to the rear balcony. I'll meet you there once I've talked with the cops. Vic nods and makes his way to the back door. 
Vic watches the lanes of hovercraft cars running through the city levels below, illuminated by aging neon signage. His grip on the railing tightens. I hear you're in trouble with your boss. Lake steps close to Vic, leaning his back on the railing. How do you... Who are you? The name's Lakes. Private investigator. Your boss, Admiral Vice. He's one of my subjects for reasons I'm sure a professional like you will know I can't divulge. Right. And you'll know I can't answer any questions from our official briefings. I don't have any questions for you. In fact, I'm sure you have a few of your own. If you want those answered, you'll have to do me a favor. Why should I trust you? If you hear me out, you just might see. I know what you're thinking. You're not getting demoted or transferred. You'll be given a choice to either go on a training seminar or be put on a small gig to get you and your boys back on track. It's going to seem a little below your pay grade, but take the job. It'll be worth your while. Here. Lakes takes out a small data card from his coat pocket. Take this. Connect it to the mainframe of the Leonian PDHQ. Lakes leans off the railing and takes steps toward the alley behind the cosmic coffin. Leonia. When Vice sends you there, you'll know I'm telling at least half the truth. Enjoy the sunshine. Vic watches Lakes disappear around the alley corner as he's left alone with his thoughts on the dark city terrace.